Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the podcast. Today I talked to a great guy called Michael Edge, who is the founder of a digital marketing uh, agency called Electric. And we had a really cool chat about digital marketing, marketing, how it's evolved. We talked about psychology in business and we talked about whether businesses should be putting purpose before profit. Uh, which was a very interesting conversation. So I hope you like it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Cool. And we're live. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Michael. Thank you for inviting me. Pleasure. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you too. So you are just telling me you were DJing in Glastonbury. That's correct. Yeah. Cool. Um, what were you doing? I, w- I play house music. So my first career um, straight out of sort of school, I guess, was DJing. And I was a pro DJ for five years. Nice. Jealous. And um, yeah, I made my own tracks. Used to work with 828 State. If you remember those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back in the day. And it's just something that came back recently. And we'll probably talk about like coaching and things later. Yeah, but yeah. Um, my coach... Um, last year I said what's the thing that really fires you up and gets you sort of passionate and I said music you know and DJing and she said to me why aren't you doing it I said that's a great question you know where do I get the time from <laughs> yeah. so it? do you have you have what, a life like a life coach or mentor yeah so yeah um, I have a few coaches actually but I did the Tony Robbins programs and I'm yeah. still doing them okay the amazing yeah. let's definitely talk about that yeah later yeah. so you're a digital marketeer. That is my main line of business. Fine, yeah, which for sure, and yeah. a job that didn't exist what ten years ago. Yeah, well, I've been doing it. I built my first website in the nineties. Wow. So, like, you know, digital's been around a long time. Um, but yeah, like, th- there's this whole new movement towards digital marketing and blending psychology with automation that's really come about in the last few years, for sure. So, have you seen your you've seen your like job and role evolve from making a website yeah. to something called digital marketing. Is yeah. it all happened? It's happened very quickly. Yeah. Well, well, I, like I said, I've been doing it since the nineties and we've been running electric since 2013. Right. And um, what is electric? So electric's um, a digital marketing agency. Yeah. Which you founded. I founded it. Yeah. Back in 2013. And um, really our, our, our sort of mission statement is to help people grow um, grow faster and shine brighter. Um, and that's what it's really about. We used to, you know, we used to build websites and we used to do videos for people. And then we realized it's actually about results. You know, like, can we deliver results for people? Can we create growth for people? Can we make people more famous online? You know, and, and that's really, I think, the the landscape that we operate in now. You know, it's in the past, y- you could put up websites and hope that Google pick you up and, you know, there you go. You've got some yeah, some, yeah. some traffic and some, some work and business out of it. But it doesn't work like that anymore. You know, you have to sort of put yourself out into the marketplace and use all the tools and psychology and creativity at, the, at your disposal to do that. Fine. So psychology being what, what consumers are thinking, feeling. Yeah, for sure. Cambridge yeah. Analytica style. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's that's hard to access now um, with GDPR and all the sort of rules that but are But is there, is there some kind of, of ethics that you've got to, like, adhere to and, and obviously, you know, living by your values? Because it's quite a powerful combination. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, when, when we set up Electric, we were really... We did it for a, a, a reason. You know, there was there's definitely a reason behind Electric and... Um, and we solidified that more over the last few years, but the purpose is really to help companies who are doing good in the world do better, you know? So so for us, there is a huge responsibility in marketing. You know, I, I used to work for big corporate brands. I was in advertising for a long time and and it sort of made my heart and soul sink. Really? Like in what having, way? <laughs> well, well if, you, if you know a product is um, bad for people, and you're pushing it and marketing it, then you're really complicit in that, you know, and especially as a, as a sort of senior person in an agency, you know, my job was to um, sell products um, and and really I only wanted to sell products that I ethically agreed with, 
you know and the and there okay, were yeah. times when you know that that line was approached you know and and i think you know as individuals we 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 have a we have a responsibility to to do what we feel is right yeah so is that kind of what inspired you to start on your own and yeah for sure yeah yeah i, w- I went through a phase where um so i worked for some really awesome ad agencies you know and digital agencies as well and but there was times where i really didn't know why i was doing the job you know <laughs> like <laughs> like it just didn't feel right you know there's so, i don't know if you've ever experienced that where something just doesn't feel yeah, right yeah yeah you know but then you know you're employed yeah you're getting a salary you have to do it you don't got a choice yeah. you know the shareholders yeah. you know like you have to do what, what you're paid to do you know yeah. so I, I, I guess i had an epiphany moments in about 2010 where there's a couple of things that came together at the same time and one was was this like are you doing something that you feel is right? You know, so like every day are you getting up and are you creating a better planet or not? You know, and that, that was a big question mark in my head. But at the same time, what I was noticing because I, I was luckily working at the cutting edge of digital marketing even back then, you know, we had great, amazing clients, you know. Um, I worked on Xbox for four years doing their digital marketing, I worked for O2, worked, you know, some really top end brands. Um, And what I started to notice was people's behavior online was just changing so quickly because the technology was changing. So, you know, um, I I post on Facebook today, I I, I bought a a phone back in 2006, which had email on it. And that was like revolutionary. You know, that's pre-iPhone. You know, and that was changing. And then the iPhone came out in 2007 and that really changed everything. And Facebook came along and then YouTube came along. And it's all like, yeah, 12 years, whatever, 10 years. Yeah, these things all happen really quickly around that time. And what I started to realize is that the old models were just going to fall to pieces. You know, so like we, we were doing TV ads and charging really high fees for these tv ads you know and as youtube came along what you started to notice was people stopped watching tv started to watch youtube and yeah, the internet yeah. and all of a sudden those th- huge budgets didn't make sense anymore you know so so the technology was changing the people people's consumption of digital media was changing and for me also my values were changing as well so these things all happened and i had an epiphany moment where i just thought I want to do something different. You know, I wanted to create something that didn't exist um, in a selfish way, in a lot of ways. You know, I wanted to give something um, to myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to create something, build yeah, something. that I yeah. want that, you know, it's my life. I get, you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have so much time. Go with it. You have, exactly, you have so much time. So I wanted to create something that um, really worked for me as a lifestyle, you know, as well. Yeah, and with this... Um, I guess social media, digital marketing, a lot of influencers are being used now in marketing. Yeah, for and sure. You see, and there's a huge impact on society, especially with young people. Yeah. Um, yeah, what do you think about that? I think we're in a interesting time. Um, I think we're always in an interesting time. So, yeah, you yeah. know, like, like there's... Uh, it's I, all relative. <laughs> it's, you it's, know, you're living where yeah. you're living and... Yeah, I mean, people talk about innovation and change. There's always been innovation and change, you know. And I think, like, now, I mean, it's really pronounced and you've got phenomena happening, like, you know, the, the, the sort of narcissism trend where people, everybody wants to be an internet superstar and they'll sort of do anything to make that happen, which you could argue is dangerous, yeah. I guess. Yeah, but it's not yeah. your really n- normal life. I mean, you're seeing people post like you know doctored photos of, yep. of themselves portraying their best selves or their image of their best selves yeah and people are getting paid quite a lot of money yeah for as sure, an influencer yeah. yeah yeah um but for kids growing up now um i mean obviously very different from when i grew up um it's a tough old tough old game it is yeah i mean we we sort of flip it around a bit because I, I i truly believe in authenticity so i think you know we grew up in a time where advertising was just everywhere you know and it's got worse and worse and worse and now like like my my four-year-old boy will skip a youtube advert as soon as that skip button comes on i've got a four and a half year old girl and she's exactly the same (laughs) yeah i mean literally they're like they know exactly where the skip button is they've got they've got bs detectors built in oh yeah Yeah. you know like and they can sniff it out and and i think we all can you know and that's why when you're talking about doctoring photos and things i actually think that's sort of going to backfire on them 
because people really what people really want and people will always connect with and this is a universal truth yeah it's just authenticity like people know when things are real and people know when things are fake and for so long advertising has been this fake thing that's pushed out although you. kardashians <laughs> um which sister was it that's the first billionaire yeah from, uh, which one was it not chloe um I can't remember which one it is now. <laughs> um, she's got her beauty line. Yeah. And all from Instagram. And she made, like, she's yeah. the youngest billionaire. Yeah. Um, and her sister did the porn video. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how it develops. But I think you, yeah, I, I, you won't be able to get away from it. It's yeah. just interesting what's going to happen in the next, say, five or 10 years. Because the, the internet's only been here 25 years. Yeah. Facebook and stuff, 12 years. So it's just amazing to think about what's coming next, if you can even imagine it. I think imagining it's going to be the the struggle because, you know, if you go back to 2005, who could imagine an iPhone in 2005? And, it, it, and you know, now you can't walk down the street without seeing everybody staring at their phones, you know, and we've got yeah. these crazy supercomputers that can do everything. Well, we've given birth hands. to a new life form. We and really are. More, probably more phones on the planet than there are humans. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, if we there's sort of a dystopian and utopian future that you can talk about and we'll probably end up somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah. But these yeah. these devices we have on us are listening devices, viewing devices. They're all hooked up to, you know, pretty much artificially intelligent beings called Google and Facebook yeah. that just collect all this ridiculous amounts of data about us all the time. And do you, you know? like that or is it exciting um, or scary? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, te I mean, technology, you know, you, technology is neutral. You know, it's how you use it that's that's interesting, you know, and um, there's always good and bad can come from anything, you know. So surveillance cameras, you could argue that surveillance cameras are really bad, but do they reduce crime? Yeah, they do. So, you know, there's always sort of a good and bad argument for these things. And we really just don't know. I mean, where it gets interesting is where you plug artificial intelligence into this. Yeah, because then yeah. you've got the potential that, um, you know, people a lot smarter than me have talked about <laughs> this, you know, like Elon Musk and, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you're creating these beings, really, you know, these super, super brains that um, could be smarter than humans at some point. No, absolutely. I was reading Homer Deus. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Awesome book. And, you know, he puts forward the notion that, you know, we haven't been on top of the food chain for very long. Um, and who's to say we'll we remain so? For sure. So th I think that's really interesting. Yeah. And as AI takes off, it might just be, you know, we're going to be having these nanoprobes in our blood soon that's yeah. fighting all disease and we'll <laughs> live to 150. And then we'll probably then start traveling intergalactically and God For knows sure. what. Yeah. It could be really interesting. I mean, you know, the um, the new neural links and things that Elon Musk is talking about where that's amazing stuff. you could separate yeah. your brain and consciousness from your body and things like that. I mean, who knows where this is going to go? We have no idea, you know. But equally, if you look in history, civilizations collapse. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we might be at peak civilization now. Who knows? Yeah. You know, we <laughs> just don't know. You start colonizing <laughs> Mars or something. Exactly. Um, so we're, really, we're going to talk about whether businesses should put purpose before mm. profit. Although if all this AI stuff takes off, it's probably almost a pointless conversation. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but there seems to be a big wave of, certainly from the last 10 years of financial crisis, mm. um, people wanting to put purpose before profit. Mm. Um, and certainly you were talking about your ethics, values, and the yeah. epiphany moment. Um, so do you yourself, running a company, clearly having to make money for it to survive and, and so forth. Are you putting purpose in the, at the heart of it? Yeah. Or is I it just marketing? No, it's not marketing. Um, <laughs> it's not because the the reason that I founded the company was f for my heart and soul, really. You know, well, I could I could have stayed at a good job all my life if I wanted money, you know. And as, and as you know, as an entrepreneur, like money is an interesting thing as an entrepreneur, you know? Is it yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. You, you live in a world of uncertainty, you know, it can be feast, it can be famine. So, you know, you've got to be, you've got to sort of separate that out. But um, no, pur purpose for me is really, really important. Um, and I think as well, because I've got children as well, that's really sort of shifted things for me. Um, because In what way? Well, you start to think about legacy. You know, you start to think about, well, the planet that we have, um, which is amazing, like, what are we doing to it? You know, and as business 
owners, like we really have a responsibility in that area because um, the decisions we make will affect the future of the planet. You know, and it really will. And do you want your children to grow up in a planet that's, you know, a lot worse than when we were born? I, I certainly don't, you know. So so for me, this is a really big responsibility. And, you know, when we talk about only working with companies that, that do good, you know, that that's such a hard thing to define. Like, what does that mean? But um, ultimately, it's like, are they going to, leave the world in a better place or a worse place yeah, what's yeah, their intention yeah. here you know is their intention to just make money and and take 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 or is it to give something back and to, to sort of help the world so so for me it is really important like super super important so you, so you think the main purpose of of the businesses should be making the world a better place um or should it just be part of you know obviously lots of different companies doing lots of different things yeah yeah but um, at the heart of it, there should be some kind of social impact, social benefit, or not just thinking about making the next paycheck. And it's up to the individual, you know. It's really it's up to the founder, you know, like yeah, what, why yeah. they yeah. want to do it. And I think sometimes as well, like a lot of people talk about purpose as if it's like this huge grand thing, like what is my purpose in life? And they spend years and years, and some people never find what the purpose is. And you know, like purpose can be something really simple. It could be like. My purpose is to make people happier than when I met them. It's a good purpose. Do you know what I mean? It yeah, can be great. that simple. Hap- well, simple. happiness is, is the thing that everyone shares. I mean, everyone's yeah. after being happy. <laughs> it's just how you get to happiness maybe varies from person to yeah. person. Yeah. But if you just like bring a light, you know, when someone walks into a room yeah. and some people like bring the whole energy of the room down and some people walk into a room and they just light a room up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe that's your purpose. You know, and uh, and as a business, maybe that's the purpose of the business, just to bring a little bit of hope to the world. You know, so no, I love that. I love that. <laughs> no, I love that. There's even I was reading there's an article in the FT about this actually. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Like last week, I forwarded it to you. And but anyway, there's a guy called Larry Fink who runs mm. BlackRock. Yeah. And he writes a letter every year. He's about to write his one for 2019, but the yeah. 2018 one, actually, and this is the guy who manages the most money in the world, yeah. 6.3 trillion dollars under management. Um, his big thing is uh, is investing in companies with social purpose. Yeah. So there's this, this is, is a big wave, even from the you know sure. the most powerful people in the world, um, to make sure that businesses are having a social impact. Yeah. What I find interesting though is, um, should it be governments that are trying to make the world a better place? Um, it feels like people are like losing faith in politicians yeah. currently, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's and it's fallen on. It's it's interesting. It's fallen on businesses to make the world a better place yeah uh, and i find that quite interesting and it feels like it's you know changed recently there's definitely a shift for sure so i, I also do um some innovation consulting for, for firms as well and last year 2018 we were doing things like um kindness and compassion in business for big corporates oh nice so, w- so what, what's that um intern like within within yeah, the company training programs in some of the big oh, corporates nice. and um the, that goes down really well, you know, and you can actually see measurable performance improvements after the training because people, again, it's connecting you back to your purpose. You know, it's like, what is your purpose? Is your purpose to do good things in the world or not? And I think I think younger people growing up really connect to that too, you know, so. Yeah. No, I love that. So you, so you did what, workshops within companies? Exactly, yeah. Uh, for people just being kinder, give someone a hug. Yeah. Be nice, empathetic. Um, yeah, empathy is a big one. Yeah, absolutely, empathy is a big one. So, yeah, it's it it, it it's right at the board level. This this discussion, yeah, you know, and yeah. a lot of it's around employee engagement. Yeah, you know, as you you'll probably know, absolutely. Like, yeah. Um, you know, people want to um pe- feel part of th- something. So, like, you know, um, Tony Tony Robbins has some great frameworks for this. Um, so I don't, if you've, if I don't know if you've been on any of his, I've been, I have been, I've been on his, um, um, like a two day, two three day thing. The unleash the power. Unleash the power. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you'll know all about this. The the six human needs. You've probably come across this. Tell so us, tell us. Yeah. So so you've got certainty. So and ba- basically the first four, everybody needs these first four, and then the second, the second two. 
um, you don't need them, but they make your life amazing. So yeah, the first four, on. everybody wants these. So, and, and some more than others. So the first one is certainty. So the reason people have jobs and you know, the reason people have a house with a mortgage and you know, the reason people get married um, is because they, they're craving this certainty in their life. You know, they want to make sure things aren't too crazy. Things are just, things, there's something feels safe in their life. Yeah, you know, stable. And stable, yeah. yeah. But then if it was like that all the time, you'd go, my, you'd be so bored that you'd go yeah. out of your mind, you know? <laughs> so as, as weird as humans bit of are, a balance, yeah. yeah, we have, we want uncertainty or variety, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and m massive sort of, um, bi sort of, um, b I'm not, I'm not being biased here, but generally <laughs> like ladies, women yeah. prefer certainty, men prefer a bit of uncertainty. But everybody wants both, you know. Yeah, everybody yeah, wants yeah. balance. Just slightly mix of yeah. But some yeah. And you'll find like entrepreneurs generally are pretty comfortable with uncertainty. Um, whereas someone who, who likes to work nine to five wants a bit more certainty. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. you so people have different balances. Then you've got um significance. So everybody wants to feel a little bit significant, you know, so they have a job title or maybe they have a nice car or maybe they wear designer gear or, yeah, yeah. you some know, status symbol. some kind of status. Yeah. Yeah. And interestingly, if you say, oh, I, I, I don't wear designer gear, that in itself is significance, you know, because you're making a statement that yeah. <laughs> yours are better than those You don't people, want the brands, you, know? <laughs> you just want understated. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, you, so it's not a bad thing. It's just something that's hardwired into us. And then the other one is love and connection. You know, so we all want to feel part of something. We all want to have friends. We all want an intimate relationship. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. Part of the tribe. And and exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's um, that's coming back to this kindness coaching in corporates. People get that. You know, like yeah, yeah. They, these are real human needs. Like people want to feel connected and have a purpose. Yeah, yeah. And then the final two, and, and this, mo most people are very happy if they get the first four. But if you want to feel um, really like, you're getting a lot out of life, you're getting the juice out of life. You need to go for the last two. And that's, <laughs> and so, so the first one is learning and growing. Yeah. So you should always feel like you're learning something or growing or challenging yourself, you know, so it might be you go and run a half marathon, you know, and every, every week you train a bit further and you feel like you're doing better yeah. or you might go back to school or you might read a book or you might listen to podcasts, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then the second, the last one is contribution. So this idea that um, it's not just about taking, it's about giving back to the world. And that might be charitable donations. It might be volunteering. You know, it might be, um, if you've got a business, it might be a percentage of your business revenues goes into a, a something you believe in. But it's just realizing that it's not all about you. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it's about <laughs> your your purpose really is to help other people. Not yeah, yeah. Just help no, yourself. I mean, I see, I see that the role of a leader is to service their employees. For sure. Rather yeah. than, what can their employees do for them? Um, but no, it's completely on like topic. Every every HR director I meet um, or someone related to people are all implementing a mindfulness thing, yoga. Yeah. They're trying to organize things to connect employees, certainly in big companies where um, most of the big companies now have don't have enough desks for their employees. Yeah. So like probably two thirds are required desks and you don't sit with your teammates. Yeah. Um, so it could be quite lonely. I mean, living in London, not having a team to sit with, yeah. needing to feel part of a tribe. How do you get all this, you know, social interaction? I and think, so, yeah. you know, these things are really important. That That's something we've, as a business, have struggled with. So like, I feel like, you know, when, when, when I set up Electric, one of the big um, sort of founding values was freedom. So um, we don't have hours we don't have a physical office. We've tried that a few times, but we've decided we don't want it. And um, it's a real challenge because you're trying to create a culture and a tribe without all being in the same room every day, you know? And so, and, and I think that's gonna become more and more just some the way we work. So that does create an interesting challenge for businesses. So what's the benefit of operating that way? Oh, huge benefits. So. Um, one hour overheads are ridiculously low. Absolute, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm <laughs> in my office here in the middle of the city and it's like yeah. eye-wateringly expensive. Yeah. But. yeah. but I think for a lot of people, like, um, 
and there is a huge benefit for having an office you know yeah, a yeah. massive benefit yeah. for having yeah. an office but um for, for the type of people that um we started employing originally like developers and creative types they just didn't want to come in the office you know because they're quite comfortable working on their own um and the commute was just a waste of time for them they felt you know so that was really interesting i think the second thing was um from when we started the collaboration tools just became very very easy and very cheap you know so like pre pre 2010 to run a business you really had to have an exchange server you know you had to have all these physical things and people hooked into a network super expensive to set super up super expensive yeah. and then all of a sudden you know g suite comes along that and was you, that, that was what that's what we use yeah it's great and you can work from anywhere yeah. you know and yeah. and what i what i found what's really interesting is when i set up electric um there was an expectation of my clients to have a, a room full of bums on seats as we call them you know and we actually lost pictures because we didn't have that. So did they ask you how many people do you have sitting in yeah, your office? For sure, yeah. Yeah. And that was a deciding factor. And so what were you like actually they're sitting at home on their couch? Yeah. And for mm. some people, actually companies you think would know better would say, Well, no, you can't pitch for this. Interesting. Now it's the opposite. Now most of our clients have got totally flexible working as well. Yeah. yeah so they yeah. just think this is normal. And, you know, it's very accepted, whereas in the past it wasn't at all. No, it's completely accepted. And, and for certain, yeah, I agree, for certain types of jobs and things, it's yeah. cool. I mean, it have to be in the office. Yeah. We're set up that way. We, we cut the cords to our desk phones. Yeah. We've got no desk phones. Yeah. We've got um, VoIP on the laptop or mobile. Yeah. We can work on the beach in Cape Town. Yeah, or exactly. Here. Why not? <laughs> we've, we've gone for an office because... Um, you know, ours is a same as your consulting firm, but a lot of the the guys and girls, it's kind of sales environment, mm. and and it's really nice to to bounce ideas off each other, motivate each other. There's huge, you know, it's like a kind of you know, I'd say coming home. Yeah, it's like a, you know, it's like a, and you're free from distractions. That's the other thing because yeah. when you when you mention like doing your work on the beach, everybody dreams to be a laptop person on the beach. I've done it. Yeah, I did it. I've done it for a long time. Right. <laughs> And it yeah. can be hard, you know, like getting getting sand in your laptop <laughs> isn't well, a nice experience. And also you could right? be at a really lovely venue and they say, look, no mobile phones here. Yeah. And you can't use your laptops yeah. downstairs. We know so. that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's a problem as well. And if you are in a beautiful place, you don't necessarily want to be staring at your laptop. You know, you probably want to be experiencing the place. So do you think then, well, where are you most efficient that's a great question and i think what what's interesting is um if you if you're really analytical like this you probably have different functions that you do during the day so for me as a as a sort of business owner stroke creative director stroke technologist i will be more efficient and productive in different environments for different tasks so for example okay, yeah, yeah. if i wanted to be really creative i would not sit in an office if I wanted to put out a cool office, mm. the dog running around um, and the we work no, style. No, I wouldn't. In fact, I, w I was really lucky to work with one of the best creative directors in the world um, in my career. And what he what he said is you shouldn't be sat at your desk. You should be out walking around, getting inspiration, absorbing things. And then when you want to produce it, come back to your desk and produce it. Yeah. But no, you I need this subconscious like stimuli, stimuli yeah. you know, all the time, you know, so. Yeah, so I think I think flexibility is the word. You know, it, it, like if if you can afford it, for sure, have an office or have some have a few offices where people can touch in. You know, um, but don't exp don't chain people to the desk. That would be right, my recommendation. No, 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 you need to be yeah flexible about it. Yeah, but then it's and then it's challenging to create that like team culture for sure. Yeah, you know, I don't do you know if anybody's together? got this right. <laughs> no, no, it's just it's developing, right? I yeah, mean, because you've got a new frontier. Yeah. You know, say like I don't want to split it into age because you know you see people that like both. Because but you, you, it feels like you know younger people want flexibility. Yeah, older people are used to working in an office, but but it also it, it flips as well. It does flip. And what, what um, so we we work with, uh, for example, um, mums, you know, who've basically decided we don't want to work in the city anymore. We want to move out to the countryside. And we will take a pay drop um, if we don't have to go and work in the city. So, you know, for them, for us, they're great. They're great contractors. For yeah, us that's perfect. Because they've got all the experience and the knowledge. 
Um, but they want flex, pure flexibility and most companies won't give them that, whereas we can do, we can offer that to them. So that's quite a big advantage. You do know? you find that people are expecting companies to be flexible but not offering flexibility in return? How do you mean? Go, on. So go into okay. that a bit more. Okay, okay. No, go into <laughs> it. So, so there's a big, there's a, the conversations around companies being flexible, mm. right? So, you know, working from home, good work-life balance, mm. although the term is strange because the opposite of life is death and everyone's <laughs> equating work to death. So that conversation needs to be changed. But um, but when they, but then you find that employees or contractors or whatever, yeah. um, I find they're less flexible if required to do, I don't know, go the extra mile, come in a bit earlier, work a bit harder. You know, like people are like, this is my work time, right? Outside yeah. of that, it's my yeah. social time you know i'm offline or whatever yeah. do, do you see um, that or not, or not so much yeah i mean i think that's just got to be part of your hiring process you know and you might even want to mix it up i mean we, we have guys who will literally work any hour of any day and they really they're really cool about that you know um and you have other people who might maybe have children and they they can't work at certain times in the day so you've got to work around that so so probably you want a little bit of a mixture you know and um, but it's tricky, you know. It is tricky, like figuring out what's going to be right for you. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, it's hard for well, for firstly, for the companies to decide what type of like organizational structures and whether you have holiday days or yeah. no holiday days. Yeah. Or un- sorry, unlimited holiday days. So a friend of mine who's got um, that kind of advertising art type company. He's coming on the podcast. Uh, in a few weeks uh he's scrapped holiday days yeah so he's just going for whatever you want to go on holiday great and these are like permanent employees salaried employees and i think he's found that uh people take less holiday days it's true i was over in los angeles and there's a big games company over there and they have unlimited holidays and people generally test l- take less holidays than the 20 days that most other people are allocated which is there's all these strange things, you know, around psychology. That no, and also the other thing, just to tie our tech conversation in, is that with technology and social media, uh, as an as an employee, you're able to see what other companies are doing. Yeah. More than, you know, 15 years ago, where actually the only way you could find out how much your mate in the competitor was earning was by asking them. Yeah. Now you just go online. Yeah. Glass door. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, right? Yep. Or, or the benefits package is plastered on people's websites. Mm. You know, bring your dog in, unlimited holiday days. Mm. So so technology, again, has, has been a great catalyst for, for all of this type of stuff. Mm, for sure, yeah. Which yeah. I find interesting. I mean, the, the biggest shift for us was when we started to use like video conferencing technology. So like Zoom. Zoom is a big deal for us. And uh, if you've used, I don't know if you use Zoom or not. Yeah, we we uh, yeah we use Ring Central, okay. which which they have the video thing powered by Zoom. Yeah, it's a sure. shame. Yeah. Same, it's great. So you can have up to like a hundred people all on screen at the same time, all around the world, and um, that made such difference to us because I think the problem with a distributed workforce is you've got this trust element. You know, it's like what are you doing? You know, like literally, like, I'm I'm paying you every day. Like, what are you doing? And I think. The, the the thing that you've got to shift towards is instead of thinking about like time in the office, it's results. So like, you know, like really we're paying you for results, not for the time you spend on this. So yeah, if you want to yeah. take like a minute and you can deliver that result, that's still worth the same to me as if you take 10 hours to deliver it. So it's really thinking about yeah, like your true. KPIs and your targets and making sure people are clear on that. And, you know, it's a work in progress. But the, the other thing around... Um, you know, moving from conference calls and emails onto video chat, all of a sudden you can look in people's eyes, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's amazing. no one to hide, right? No, no, no. And You've got to get dressed up. Yeah. <laughs> good, good background. Yeah, well, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's fine if you wear, you know, <laughs> if you don't. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just that, it's just that turning up, isn't it? It's like you say, it's like yeah. being present, being, t- being there, being more connected with people. And I think the really interesting thing that, digital video has enabled us to do is convey emotions really well yeah and that's in, true. and you know as humans we need that emotional connection with each other and the conference calls never did that really you know true true do you think it's interesting because it's a very um it's a very like what's well, a new way of working but it's quite uh you need to be very disciplined yeah and uh 
I'd be really interested. My kid, like yours, is four, almost five. Uh, is school preparing her for the, you know, because you've got to be very self motivated, disciplined, efficient. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, we weren't prepared for working like that. No. It was like nine to five. Um, life was, you know, education, a career, and retirement. And now, like, forget retirement. You know, and you might have oh, yeah. three careers in your yeah, life. For sure, yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting to see um, if if school will prepare them for what lies ahead. <laughs> it's a great question. I, I'm not sure it is doing efficiently, but um, equally, I think I do believe that kids tend to prepare themselves. So, you know, like I was, I was genuinely shocked at how well my little boy can use iPads and things like that with no no that's true yeah. he just figured it out you know and i remember as a kid myself you know I, I was playing computer games no one was teaching me i was just literally picking things up and like learning them and i think the the amazing thing that we've got now is you know like youtube like you can literally learn anything oh it's amazing I mean, i've anything. got this new mixer i had to go out to youtube how to use it yeah yeah so like are, are schools even relevant anymore i don't i don't know like what kind of frameworks do we put in place for our children going forward yeah. i don't know we've got these MOOCs, massive online learning communities yeah. and all these universities are doing stuff online we do video courses yeah. degrees yeah. it's amazing yeah but then but then equally you know like anybody can be a university yeah so, you yeah. know like like anybody can go on to udemy and create an udemy course so you, you know um in the past, you know, when I, I learned computer, I studied computer science, you know, and we had some great teachers, but it was a mix. You know, some people were right at the cutting edge and some people were teachers because, to be fair, they couldn't make it in the real world, you know. So you, you, your level of expertise was really varied, you know, when you were being taught in an academic institution. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Whereas now you can learn from people who are, are really the best, genuinely yeah. the best. Yeah. Without having to go and spend a fortune or go to no, a different you can place, just do it at home. you can do it in your bedroom. Yeah, you know. So the playing fields are just being totally leveled. But what you said about, you know, this um, discipline and this like desire to learn, like you know, the amount of books that I want to read at the moment is ridiculous. <laughs> but I've got to actually go and read them. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like well, do you know? I've got to be <laughs> honest. I I've just started audio books. Yeah, same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I've never done it before. I, I did. Yeah. Uh, well, Homo Deus. I mentioned the Sapiens, both on audio books. Yeah. Twenty minute commute. Press play. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Go for a run. You can go do it while you're run, running. Yeah. Go to the gym. Because <laughs> uh, on the tube, it's really hard to like pick the book up, and you're yeah. knocking into people. So no, the the audio stuff's great. Yeah. And for the first time in history, so usually, um, if you think back, I don't know, even 30 years, you learn from reading, mm. but now you're learning from listening and watching videos. Mm. And so, um, like, more, more people have access to all of this knowledge now is, mm. is just exponential, mm. which is great. And it also makes you think around, you know, like, memorizing things. Like, do we actually need to ever memorize things anymore if all the information is just there all the time? Yeah, I can just say, okay, Google. Yeah. And then yeah, search. Yeah, I, I mean again, again, thing. voice search. You know, that's that's huge. Like yeah, yeah. my my four year old can do OK Google, say um, Siri, um, Alexa. You know, it's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. So like they've just got access, and he was literally saying to um, Google Google Home this week. He was saying, OK Google, tell me about tectonic plates. <laughs> this is a four year old. <laughs> Right, so and, he, and he's not particularly special, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, I think he is, but like, you know, <laughs> like, I could, could you do that at four years old? You know, like, no, we, but going back to your point, I mean, we never had it. Yeah, maybe we could have. It's yeah. it's funny because everyone says, oh, you know, when I was growing up, and I said it a few times today, but you know, they growing up now, and you just adapt to your environment. Well, not even adapt. It's just this is your environment. This is it. This is what we're know. adapting. Yeah. Because we remember back when, but now it's just they're born into this environment. Yeah, yeah. They're native to it, and they just you know I've even got I've got a two and a half year old, and she's skipping the adverts. Yeah, <laughs> she's like <laughs> I've actually had to I'm actually taking away the iPad because her, the problem is is that so she watches something but she can't watch the whole thing. She's flicking up to yeah. go for the other things to f really bad. That 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 is something to to like be her attention about. spans. The attention spans are ridiculous. So like Instagram. Right, the, like these technologies now are reducing people's in attention spans to next to zero. So yeah, like there will be, there's going to be a counter movement again. But the thing is, like if if you look at anything, there's always a counter movement. 
So if you look at like music, you know, everything went digital. Guess what? People are playing vinyl again. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So there's, there's always these yeah. swings, but you know. But could you unplug and go and live in a cabin in Greenland? Personally, no. No. But <laughs> but he's I mean, you just almost, imp- I mean, it'd be yeah. super hard to. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess one of the bigger things that I think about sometimes is, you know, we've become so dependent on technology. Like this interconnected web of technology, if it goes down, would we be able to survive for a day as a society? You know, like, because when the cash machines stop working, you know, when those supermarkets don't refill themselves, you know, like, what happens? Yeah. You know? No, it's, in, it's, part, it's part of us now. Yeah. 100%. But what if there was, you know, an, uh, an electromagnetic pulse that wiped all this out? Then what? I think, do, you <laughs> do you think would, would, you feel, would we feel cleansed or just lost? I don't know. That's that's a really great question. Yeah, to yeah ask, it's a great right? question. <laughs> Is Tony Robbins coming up with anything interesting to help us deal with that stuff? Um, but what, what, what have you been doing? So you've been doing, so have you been doing uh, like his various courses yeah. and, and others? So I, I sort of signed up to the whole lot. So I, I did um, business mastery and then a thing called Mastery University, which takes you through all these big programs. So you get a coach, um, you do Unleash the Power, which is the one that you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you do Date with Destiny, which is his like big flagship, um, big events. Um, you do Life Mastery and Wealth Mastery. Awesome. Um, and all for the point of kind of integrating it, intertwining it within your digital marketing. So the marketing and psychology. The psycho, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, I think what's really important and, and something I didn't do for a long time was just invest in myself. You know, I think as a business owner, um, and th- this brings us on to something else as well that we're, that we're working on at the moment. But I think mm-hmm. as a business owner, especially at the start, your growth is directly linked t- as a business, directly linked to your own personal growth. Yeah, true. You know, and often we forget to invest in ourselves and we, you know, we just think that our business will grow on its own and it, and it won't, you know, unless you're incredibly lucky. Yeah. You have to really invest and grow yourself as a person and learn new tools and new skills. So that, that was part of that for me, you know, really sort of like... Fine. So it started out as a personal investment in yourself. For sure, yeah. And then yeah. it's kind of fed through into your business activities and yeah, so forth. Yeah, and it's led me down different paths as well. Um, so I spent a lot of time over the last year or so with um, one of Tony Robbins' coaches. Oh, cool. So he's a guy called Donnie Epstein. Okay. And yeah. he works on um, <laughs> Tony Robbins' energy field, right? Which is? So, so all of us, if you think about this, you know, um, if you go into the, the quantum physics realm, um, really, the only things in the universe are energy and information. So we are made up of energy, you know. And if our energy is out of line, you can feel that, you know. So like, like I was saying before, if someone walks into a room, you will feel their energy. You know, you will feel like if they're up or they're down, you know, between us now, like we, we are sensing each other's energy. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And if you've got someone like Tony Robbins, you know, he stands up in front of 13,000 people, if you've ever seen him, he's got so much power and energy. You know, he can literally hold an audience of 13,000 people for four days. Like, and the days are long, right? They're full on long Crazy. Days. Yeah. How does he do that? You know, like, how does he do that, right? So he, need, he actually works with people to just maintain that energy in him. So he has all that energy and that power. And there's a few guys he works with, but the one that I really sort of connected with is Donny Epstein. And... Yeah, he, he's created all this science around the, your energy fields. And Amazing. So yeah. you, he does some courses you've been on. Yeah, 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 yeah. He does one-to-one work. Oh, and, nice. Um, in- American guy. Or? He's f- yeah, he's from Brooklyn originally, and he lives in Denver, Colorado now. A lot of the courses are in Denver. Okay, cool. So, so have you been over there? Yeah, I've been out there twice last year. Nice, Denver. nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it had an impact? <laughs> for sure, yeah, yeah. And it's quite, um, at the time when you're doing them, um, it's quite hard to like understand the impact they have on you. But then what, what happens is other people noticing you. So you, people will okay, say yeah, like, yeah. wow, you're totally different since you went on that course, you know? So the, they'll sense the change in you, which is really interesting. Nice. Yeah. And so you mentioned briefly, so you're doing a new venture? 
Is that yeah, right? yeah. So you know, it's part of this. Um, it's part of this journey towards investing in yourself and growing as a business owner and growing the business. Um, one of my clients is really, really into this. So this this is a, a guy who set up some businesses. One one was called Get Licensed, and um, they just went really big, you know, very awesome. quickly. And he he really took this notion of investing in your, in on yourself um quite a long way so he goes to harvard business school for three weeks in the year you know he, he does a lot of spiritual work so yeah, you know, yeah. he'll go off to burning man and oh, nice, he's nice. just <laughs> come um come back from a wim hof course in poland Do wow. you know, i don't even know wim hof the ice man oh yeah yeah if you yeah, look yeah, yeah. him up he's very cool i've done his courses as well um but one of the things he realized was when he was on his courses is that he wa- he was a teacher, you know, and he realized oh, that that he'd been able to invest in himself in a high level, um, with some some of the big sort of business training programs and business networks, but there was a real gap in the market, and there's there's lots of people who focus on brand new startups and how to get them up and running, and there's lots of people who focus on like very big sort of five million plus turnover businesses but there's a bit of a gap between the hundred thousand and one million turnover and um he really wanted to put together something that helps people get past that one million pound revenue barrier you know because a lot of people get stuck there you know and it's really at the point where you sort of question yourself like can i do this you know you've probably been there as a business owner yeah, yeah, like you get yeah, so far yeah. and then it's like uh, but it's like, also it's like <coughs> Goal setting, mindset, yeah, all, all of that stuff. Just peer groups. Who you spend most time with? Exactly. Yeah. Having the right goals, exactly. setting them up as high as possible. Yeah, having the skills, you know, having the knowledge, having the network, all those things that are really important. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's put together a program, um, and it, it's it's basically like, um, weekend program, but then also a community of like-minded people as well. And it's co- going to be called Founders Academy. Nice. nice. Um, so that's going to launch in February. Amazing. So and you're doing it with him? Yeah. So basically, he's, he's a client of ours yeah. anyway. And we, we're doing it as a joint venture. Amazing. Um, yeah. So nice. if you're interested in that, it's just founders.academy. The site will be launching in a couple of weeks. If you want to find out more about it, you can email me or contact me in any way. Amazing. Um, so yeah, if you... If you so you'll get to network with fellow entrepreneurs yeah and all of you trying to get above the million that's the goal and then yeah. the next course above two million and then 10 million <laughs> <laughs> well the, there's other people who do that so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so there's yeah, yeah. there yeah. is a gap in the market yeah, yeah definitely we feel yeah to get people beyond that and then so it's going to be what so mindset goal setting yeah absolutely some quite practical things so like you know how do you get your marketing machines running properly how do you get your recruitment machines running properly you know how do you how do you position yourself in the marketplace nice so some like implement implementable strategies yeah. that they can go back to the uh, go out to the office and just start absolutely yeah. yeah yeah so part mindset part practical yeah. part support network as well so a regular series of events online portal all, all those things you know that yeah, yeah you really need as a business owner when you feel a little bit lost and don't know what to do <laughs> no, no it's true it's true i mean when i started uh i read a couple of books i read uh i read e-myth revisited E-Myth, yeah, yeah yeah uh which is great and then there's a guy called sir ronald cohen who was the founder of apex partners so the okay. first private firm in europe yeah. let's say and <coughs> he wrote a great book and I was reading it and it was about his investments and didn't work out and yeah. you know, on the bread line. And then he built Apex, which is like amazing private equity firm. And I thought, sod it, I'm just going to crack on. Yeah, yeah. And then it starts to go and you experience all these things. And I had a little network of uh, friends that also started businesses mm. around the same time. So like my, my kind of weekly catch up call would be to my mate, how are you getting on? He'd be like, great, just done like, you know, these deals or had these successes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. shit. Um, you know, it motivated it me to like do, bet, me, do better yeah. next week yeah. if I hadn't done as well. And it's really, it's really important to have the network. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's you can be quite alone. You can be quite alone. It's very lonely. Yeah, because you be. know, you start something and you're working harder, longer, for less money than you were yeah. when you're employed. No one tells you that. No one tells <laughs> you that. You're the HR guy, the sales guy, the finance guy, the cleaner, like everything. Everything. And yeah. then you're like, uh, this isn't as cool as it's supposed to be. <laughs> and then once you start realizing that. And you start hiring people into different jobs, yeah. 
and you start looking for help and support and stuff, then you can create something really cool. Yeah. So. Like and stuff. um, you've I don't you've read the book Think Rich Grow Rich Napoleon Hill I haven't but super famous yeah. awesome book, but he introduces this concept of the mastermind. So and it's exactly what you said then. You just get a group of people together, and maybe once a week, sometimes once a month, and you just discuss the issues that you've got. And all of a sudden, you know, it just brings all these new perspectives, saying all these new ideas in, and it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know? it was like you were saying about um coming up with new new ideas and being creative and innovative. If you step out of your business and speak to people that are unrelated yeah, to it yeah. and you start talking, and then just things pop in your mind. You, or, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, or you just ask yeah. a question. And you're like, well, why don't you do it like this? And you're like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Why don't I? And you, Yeah, no, I love that. It's great. So I'll come along to your first one. Awesome. Yeah, done. you're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for, uh, thank you. for coming on. We've done like almost an hour, which is cool. And then... Uh, I'll get you one next time. Awesome. Cool. Thanks Thank so you. much. Bye. Cheers, Lewis. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Bye.